I'm going to pray. Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, we are grateful to be able to come before your presence. And Lord, we ask you to forgive us for taking it for granted. Because you alone are God, the creator of heaven and earth and everything that's in it. We ask God that you will have your way, your free course. Lord, I open wide my heart and my spirit. If you want to change what I have prepared, Father, that's okay with me. I didn't come to impress anyone, Lord, but I came to do your will. Let your word have recourse. In Jesus' name. I am so reminded through the word of God that how much Jesus love us, that he give us every opportunity. To know him. To be healed. To be delivered. Even there are wars that are raging against us. He never leave us. He never forsake us. We have a real enemy and he doesn't want us to make it in the kingdom. He don't want us to be a great influence in the earth. And the Bible describes him as a thief and a robber. He comes to steal our joy. He comes to hinder our faith. He comes to steal and he comes to kill. And you know what's evident is He don't bother us until we come into the kingdom of God. We don't even know who he is until we say yes to Jesus. And once we say yes to Jesus, it seems like all hell break loose. So the world might look on us and say, well, what is all the fuss about? They don't see the invisible enemy. I'm going to read this passage of scripture. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, Our spouse is on our enemy. The children are not our enemy. The bullies in schools are not our enemy. Your parents are not your enemy. 
The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen? In-laws are not your enemy. Hmm? Your neighbors are not your enemy. Your bosses are not your enemy. Amen? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. The saints aren't your enemy. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts a wickedness in heavenly places. That's the enemy. Some levels we will never have to fight because then God knows we're not equipped for it. Therefore, take the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all you know to do, all that you obeyed, stand anyway. Amen. Stand therefore having, your gir your, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your foot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We have to stand. I think Paul somewhere said, endure hardness as a good soldier. Why am I coming this way? I'm coming this way because I know that all of us are under attack. We're under attack from the head to the back door. They're all of us. We are under attack. And uh, that's what I'll be sharing. Attack from the enemy. Now, some people might think they are not under attack. The devil plans his attack. He has a strategy. In every situation, the first step in recognizing an attack is understanding the devil will work his strategy two ways. Temptations and wiles. Wiles are schemes, a, cle a, a clever, often underhanded means to achieve an end. You know when the devil deal with us, he don't come forthright. But well, we would recognize him. Amen. Uh, a wile is also treachery, a shenanigan, a device. And we just heard about how Satan brings wicked devices to pass. It's the devil. It's our arch enemy. It's the enemy of our soul and all of us yeah. in here has an attack from the enemy because he's always working to undermine our faith He's always working to steal our joy, and if he get our joy, he get our strength. Amen. And so, I want to expose him a little bit, how he work, and how that we can watch, and then we can discern him. We said he works in two ways with temptations and wiles. 
Temptations are obvious. We know what thou shalt not steal, kill, thou shalt, shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, uh, have thy neighbor's wife, okay? Uh, if we have those desires, there are temptations. They are outright blatant words, exposures, or situations. James 1, 13. Go there. I'm going to start at verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I'm tempted of God. For God cannot tempt us by evil, nor does he himself tempt any, anyone. But each one is tempted. Now see, these are, the, these are temptations. When each one is tempted, when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Amen? Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now, in order to differentiate the attacks of the enemy, you got to know who God is. God is not your enemy. He's not out to hurt you. He's not judging you. He's not condemning you. He satisfied all of that through Jesus Christ. So when you're tempted and you're angry with God, it's because of these things in the heart. Amen. Because of circumstances, the person you should be angry with, either yourself or the devil. Amen. Paul just said it. We are uh, enticed with thy own lust. Okay? I'm going to read that again. But each one is tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Now I know I'll, I'm not looking for no amens or no hallelujahs. Because the truth will make us free. You should know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Because the enemy has set up camp in our mind and tell you that God is against you. That you can't make it in God. That nobody loves you. If nobody on earth loves you, Jesus do. Amen. Amen. So the enemy will have us accusing God for things that are happening to us. We'll blame. The first person to get the blame is never the devil. I wonder why. But it's always God. God get the blame. God, why you allow these people to die? God, why you allow the, the war in Ukraine? God, he just told us why. Why did my mama do me like she did me? Why did my daddy do me this way? It was the devil. Amen? Know that God is good. 
and he made every provision to demonstrate his love to us. So if he loved us that much to give his, us his best, will he take the best and make it work against us? No. Getting back to the attacks of the enemy. Jesus exposed the devil by teaching the disciples about his devices, how he worked, his schemes, you know, his craftiness, his cunningness. Understand this principle. Exposing the devil is not our priority. Knowing God is. We know God, it'll take care of the devil. But anything that hinders our relationship with God or attempts to abort his plan in the earth must be dealt with and properly understood. Now, I talked about this before about the military. Daryl, Matt, any more military people in here? When you go into Uncle Sam's army, You go in boot camp. And when you go in boot camp, they train you how to use your artillery. They train you how to clean, break down, and put your rifle together in so many minutes. Because you got to always be ready for the enemy. Not only do they train you in weaponry, but they also train you in the attacks of the enemy. And when they're training you, everybody have to be, I guess they call it a platoon. And that platoon, everybody have to be on one accord. Everybody have to watch each other's back. Amen. And then you got to know the stratagems of the enemy, the territory, how he's coming. Amen. And so this is real, but it's the same thing in the kingdom. You got to know the commander in chief. I won't call him the Holy Spirit. And you got to follow his directives if you're going to win the warfare, if you're going to defeat the attacks that's against you. Amen? You got to know the devil's strategy. You got to know how your enemy operate. And God has given us all these things. Um. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11, one of the things, the attacks of the enemy against us is holding unforgiveness in our heart. That's one, one attack. The Bible says, be quick to forgive and slow to wrath. He didn't tell us to get mad, get angry get bitter, want to kill. Amen. 2, 10, and 11. Now when, now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ. Uh, Paul was dealing with a situation. And, but he said this in verse 11. Lest Satan, you, we have to forgive, lest Satan shall take advantage of us. For we are not ignorant of his devices. Now Paul understood something about Satan's strategy. That if he held unforgiveness, it would cause the people to have unforgiveness. And then it would give Satan occasion to bring strife, division, 
Amen? And then for the enemy, come in and conquer. We're talking about the attacks on the enemy. Hosea 4, 6 states, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Huh? We have to have knowledge of how the enemy comes against us. Okay? Because if you don't have that information, he's going to defeat you. Huh? Before you even get out of bed, he going to put something in your mind. And you haven't discerned that that's not God. You haven't discerned that that's the enemy putting something negative in your heart, in your spirit. We have to resist the enemy. Okay. A lack of knowledge in the area of demonic influence have caused many believers to fall and fail. Many open the trap door of calamity, destruction, and even death but not knowing the intention of their enemy. We said the enemy come to steal, kill, and destroy. The last commission Jesus gave to, before he left earth was, in my name shall they cast out devils. We can't cast out something we don't know about. Or well, understood now, all of us, we, we heard about the enemy uh, causing this or doing that. But what about the enemy of your soul? What about that? Are we watching? The enemy that's in a me, according to T.D. Jakes. We don't watch that enemy. You know, an example how the enemy just comes in. Or how you recognize an attack. You know how you can leave the house of God and you fired up and you don't praise God, you don't dance out your shoes and out your clothes and your hair's all messed up. Had a good time in Jesus. Man, we had a good time. But as soon as you get in, the, in your house, your house, seems like all, I won't say that word, but it breaks loose. A wrong look. A wrong word and an inconvenience time will throw you a helter skelter. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> the devil, yes. he's subtle. Yes. Hallelujah. We have to watch how he come to us. He used to catch me off guard. Well, I, I, you know, not this marriage, but my first marriage, and I, I love my husband. But it was a warfare going on, and I would have me a good time in church, and I'd be praying when I got out to get in the house. Sometimes the enemy would be sitting there waiting for me. And you try not to say nothing. You try not to let the devil steal your joy. But you have received enough grace under the anointing in the presence of the Lord that you don't have to fight back. You know to hold your peace and let the Lord fight that battle. But when he gets you off guard, catch you unaware, you got to figure out whose side you on.
You got to, you, you might be a Christian, but you might act like the devil. Not me. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about me. Because it used to happen. And once I would open my mouth, the words, after being, um, um, what I want to say, promote, um, provoked, after being provoked, Lord, you know, I, don't, I just got to go with God, okay? Because it's going to help somebody. You won't have to get involved in every uh, uh, offense. You don't have to re uh, react to every temptation. You don't have to do it. But God has equipped us. He prepares for warfare when we're praying. So see, we need to know how important that prayer is. It's not just praying a good few minutes and a, good, a few good words. It's protection from the unseen enemy. Hallelujah. The word of God is protection for the unseen enemy because the word is spirit. We're still in the flesh. But the word is spirit and is life. And when you don't feel good, when you don't feel up to it, the word is still work. That's why the word of God is so important. But I'm moving on. As we grow and mature in the Lord, we are able to discern how the enemy comes. So it's trial and error for us. We learn that if I humble myself, God will protect me. Huh? He'll restrain me from doing what I want to do or want to say. And I have had that to happen many times. I would be in a situation and subtly the enemy is there. And I'm known to me, people have different motives in their heart for whatever reason. This wasn't in the home. And a person says something to provoke something. And I was getting ready to open my mouth and my daughter had a, a beach ball, and she threw it right in my mouth. <laughs> God have a sense of humor. He, he, he can shut you up. <laughs> and I got the message real clear. I knew it was God not wanting me to say anything. But anyway, moving on. Okay, godly confrontation when led by the Holy Spirit to confront, uh, to confront results are produced, godly results are produced. Godly confrontation when led by the Holy Spirit to, conf uh, to confront godly results are produced. When we are led by the Holy Spirit, and the spirit of Christ is in us. When we are tempted, we don't have to always confront. Now, you, this when the enemy comes, your confrontation can be a soft word, not aggressive, not acting like the other person. Your uh, confrontation can be a change of attitude or position. Amen. What the enemy wanted me to do, I can do the opposite. Amen. So, and then the third one is confrontation is um, you can be 
uh, uh, not a, so aggressive, but you can kind of get loud in your confrontation. But that confrontation, when you get loud, is not to the person, but it's against the enemy and warfare when the Holy Ghost take over and he be warned on your behalf. Amen. That's the way we confront the enemy. We, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Amen. Well. Huh. I just lost my notes. Oh, okay, we're back. All right. The symptoms of an attack. The enemy will attack you in the realm of your mind, your body, and your spirit. Okay, those are the three areas he's going to attack. And how many know he always go for that mind first? Huh? As uh, the, the word says, as a man thinking of thinketh in his heart, so is he. So he can always go after that mind. Then when he can't get your mind, he start working on the body. And then your spirit. Just as physical appetite leaves a person who is sick in their body, it also, the first thing they hit and leave a person under spiritual attack. Now this is how it happened. When you are attacked spiritually, you start not being hungry for the things of God. You don't want to go to church. You don't want to pray. You don't want to uh, want to read the Word, the Bible. And to be blunt, you don't even care about where God is in your life. He might be in where he was one. He might be four because of the attacks of the enemy. He attacked your appetite for the things of God. And how many have gone through so much or you've been warring so much that you've gotten weary? You don't want to fight another battle. You don't want to, uh, you want to take a break, want to look at a little bit of TV. And, and, and I do it, I say like this, I just want to rest my mind. And that's what Satan wants us to do. He wants us to turn to the carnal things. Amen. Because we, we're fighting all the time. We, you're fighting, you're going. You're doing, you know, uh, but those things that we do are our strength. Even though we're tired in the process of doing it, it keeps us. Because when you give out, believe it or not, some of our problems, and I say our problems, is that we don't give out the right kind of thing. We don't give out. That's not everybody. But some of us don't give out. And so we find ourselves being defeated. Because when you give out, you're giving out life, and that life's going to come back into you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you've got to give out. You've got to talk about the goodness of the Lord. That's your strength. Amen. You talk about the goodness of the Lord. You witness to somebody that don't know Christ, it will restore your joy. Hallelujah. Go get out of your, yourself and go and knock on somebody's door that don't know Christ. And you know what? Sometimes you might have a neighbor that's, that's not real approachable. you rather they weren't your neighbor. But I tell you what, if you turn on Christ in you and you do a kind deed, you might win your neighbor. Amen. And then you might create an uh, opportunity 
to win them to Christ. So what is that going to do for you? That's going to increase your joy. Huh? You know, you know how we do? If somebody make us mad, we're looking for a way to get them back. We don't want to speak to them. We don't want to be bothered with them. Or we just cut them off. But that's not how God told us to do it. We have to watch out for those attacks because those are the attacks of the enemy. Okay, we said they lose their appetite. They lose an appetite for the things of God. That's one way that you can know that you're under attack. When a person under attack, when a person is under attack, he may lose his spiritual hunger for God. Matthew 5, 6 says, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. So we should have a hunger and thirst for God all the time. Don't isolate yourself. Sometimes we get mad at people, get mad at people in church, and we don't want to be bothered. We stay home, shut ourselves in, and don't talk to nobody. Can I get a witness? Isolation is, the, is what the devil wants. That's his attack. Because, see, if he gets you by yourself, He's, he has more wisdom than you do, and he know how to beat you down, stop beating you down in your mind, start oppressing your mind, telling you ain't this and that, don't nobody like you, don't nobody love you, don't nobody want to be bothered with you. That's the enemy. After he isolates you, and he's going to try to keep you isolated, and then he's going for the kill. That was attack, number one, still. When, you desire, when your desire for God leaves, it gives entrance to the devil. Huh? Ta Satan takes advantage of how he put a whole lot of, he replaces our spiritual life with a whole lot of carnality. And then we get caught up in vices. And then before we know it, we're way off course. I hope this is helping somebody. And you know what the word says? An idle mind is a devil workshop. He liked that. That's an invitation. And to combat that, you need to get you a prayer partner. So when you start getting into the moves, you have somebody that can fight with you and, and feed on the word of God. It's spirit and it's life. Amen. Or go talk. When you feel down, go talk to somebody about the Lord. It'll lift your spirit up. Amen. Number two, the second thing that happens to a person under attack is a loss of strength. We lose our force and our accuracy because we, we're not Sin is clear. True joy, true, our true joy, strength, and life come from the inward man. It don't come from the outside. It comes from the inner man. It brings us joy. It brings us strength. Amen. And the Bible said the, the, it'll be in us a well of living water. It's a life-giving force that's on the inside, but when the enemy, hallelujah, attacks our strength, he starts drying up the well. huh? And then we find ourselves complaining more, finding more fault, being critical. Amen. Attack from the enemy. Amen. Yeah, I ain't talking about y'all, y'all. I'm talking about me. The only way you can effectively fight against an attack is by gaining your strength from the Lord. Joel 3.10, that the weak say I'm strong, 
Joel 3.10. We must learn to fight with the word of God. Amen. Don't fight with our words. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But I tell you, the word of God is a sharp two-edged sword, and it will cut you. Amen? But we don't use it as a weapon against each other. We use it as a weapon against our enemy. The third attack is when you're under attack, you recognize that you don't feel like yourself. You ever been like that? You, 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 you know you're dealing with something, you know you're going through, but you just can't put your hand on it, but it's making you feel a certain kind of way. That's an attack. Don't be intimidated in a spiritual war. Intimidation is a major weapon of the enemy, and boy, did I have a fight with that. Intimidation. Hmm. It's a real weapon. Because that spirit of intimidation comes to tear you down, make you something that you're really not. And it's usually the opposite of what everything God said about you. Amen. That spirit of intimidation comes to rob you of your identity. It comes to rob you of your strength, your stamina. And it comes to rob you of your faith. The spirit of intimidation is evil and it's wicked and it's subtle. And it comes with suggestion. It comes with a thought. Amen? You know what? You know you can't do that. You remember when such and such happened? And then another thought come behind that and remind you of something that happened before that on the same line. And before you know it, you feel like you're a failure. That's an attack from the enemy. Amen. He worked on the memories with intimidation. Okay. Those are the three ways that you can recognize the attacks of the enemy. Comes through temptations. The enemy comes through temptations and wiles. Amen. A strategic plot. And in temptations, he, the enemy, he's very patient. Whatever you did in your past, before you got saved, or however way you were, and them temptations, God, the enemy, wait till you get in God, get ordained, on fire, winning a lot of souls, and have a platform, and he'll come back with that thing that was hidden in the past, if you haven't let God deal with it. Amen. He'll come back at you with it to humiliate you and to affect as many of those people that you influence in a good way. That's the devil. Amen. So I shared this because about attacks because it makes you more watchful. It makes you want to get in the face of God and really know the God that you serve, that he's always for you and never against you. I don't care if everybody in the world against you. If Jesus is with you, you got all the world with you. Amen? And my conclusion the cleansing of our hearts, the word of God, and the knowledge and understanding 
of what strong prayer can do will lead us into the victory every time. Amen. The word of God, prayer, because this is how we watch. The Bible said, watch as well as pray. Who are you going to watch in? You're going to watch Anidra? You're going to watch Deacon um, Larry? You're going to watch Minister Rose? No, that's not the enemy. That's not where the enemy is. The enemy is in me. Amen? Because that's where the enemy come. He don't come to Rose. He come to me. Amen? To attack me. He might make me look at Rose funny. You know, he might make me look at Anidra and point out her thing to make me feel better. But the enemy always come at us individually. And if he pull, he can pluck us individually, he can defeat us as a whole. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm, I'm done.